Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the infotainment breakdown on the 2023 Chevy Colorado. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how the digital gauge cluster works, the digital infotainment screen works. We're gonna take a look at how Android Auto and Apple CarPlay pair up and how they function. Take a look at the voice controls and then wrap things up. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. The all new for this year, third generation, hunks, Chevy Colorado. We've had a lot of fun with this truck, as you can see. Got it dirty, taking it up the mountains. We've done fuel economy testing, tested out the six speaker sound system as well. So if you do wanna see any of that, check the link in the description. But this Trail Boss model is a nice choice for someone who wants a truck that looks good, is capable off-road, but you're not paying all the extra costs for the advanced shocks and a lot of the advanced interior bits as well. So about $41,000, it's doing a lot of big truck things at a little bit lower price. Starting right off in front of us here is an eight inch digital gauge cluster. And right now you can see it looks remarkably simple. That's because I've got it in a bit of a simple screen. So all you're seeing is your speed right up in front of you in a digital readout, miles to empty down there. It doesn't even show you a full fuel gauge. It shows you if you're in two wheel drive or four wheel drive, which gear you're in, your odometer, temperature, and a compass. But if we press this button right here, then you're greeted with a more conventional gauge display. It's got a tachometer analog going around there, still your digital speed in the middle. And I gotta say, I appreciate Chevy for not doing some sort of fake analog um, speed display, because if you've already got digital speed, you're never gonna be looking at the analog speed anyway. So unless it's a good classic looking physical gauge, then yeah, don't worry about it. Just give me the tack like that, I appreciate it. Then you've got trans temp on the upper left, fuel on the lower left, oil temp on the upper right and coolant temp on the lower right. Press this button one more time and you're greeted with trip information, trip one and trip two with the total miles traveled and average fuel economy over that mileage. Now, interestingly, you don't reset those trips anywhere from here. To do that, you have to press home in the center screen, scroll until you see vehicle info. And then once that loads, you go over here to top right trip and then trip information, and that is how you reset trip one or trip two. I'd be lying if I told you that that didn't take me quite a while and maybe a Google search to figure out. Pressing this button again gets you to the next screen. That's your media. That's gonna show you what's playing. I've got a radio station up now, but if I had a song going on my phone, then it would show me right there. This is your off-road screen. This is pretty cool. It gives you pitch and roll angles, as well as information on your transfer case and how many degrees your steering angle is press one more time and it gets you back to that calm screen there. That is the sound of a text message coming up. And interestingly, even though I only have my phone paired up for Android Auto, I've still been getting text message alerts. And I'm sure there's a way to turn that off. We'll find that here in a moment, but I've never had a car default to playing my text messages through the main screen. But let's move over here into this main display. Clean it off a bit real fast. That's one downside of these big high definition screens is they fill up with dust and fingerprints quite easily. So keep a cloth around, it's gonna keep it looking and feeling nice. I really appreciate this 11.3 inch screen in the Colorado and remarkably it comes standard on all the trims. You can even get a base Colorado work truck or trail boss without cruise control, but you still get this excellent infotainment screen. On the left side, you've got standard navigation buttons that stay there all the time. You've got home, media, navigation, phone, vehicle, and then a Google Assistant. This is an Android automotive based system, which means it's running a version of Android that's specifically tailored for infotainment use here in vehicles. So the big highlight of that is the mapping system right here, which you can see comes up and looks fantastic. It's a large map and it works really, really well moving it around, navigating, getting traffic information, and doing voice control. It's gonna work very similarly to Google Maps on your phone or tablet or computer at home. So let's start, where should we start off? Up on the top here, you've got a notification screen. So that's gonna show you any of the notifications you got coming up, text messages, calls, things like that. Oh my gosh, that looks awful already. I'm gonna be wiping this thing down the whole time. Next to that, that's actually where you get your lighting controls. Surprisingly, Chevy has entirely removed any sort of headlight control physically on the left side of the car there. And in order to adjust your headlights, you do it right here. Fortunately, if you just have them on auto, it's gonna always work right there, but you can turn them on, off, or uh, what are these, your running lights right there via the screen, something to get used to. 
Then if you press up here, you're gonna get phone information, what phone's connected, and you can see your signal level and your charge status right there. Further on to the left, you've got your temperature, outside temperature, although it's not actually coming up with anything, but if you press the clock, you're gonna get settings for your clock. This is how you're gonna change date and time, or simply leave it on automatic and it'll sync it up for you wherever you are. Then let's go through the bottom, or the left side here. If you press this top one, that's gonna to toggle your voice control, and you can do a lot of useful things with this voice control. However, I'm not sure if you can do things, I don't think, you can't do climate related things because this is a manual climate control. I don't know if you can do any other truck related type things, but you can at least use it for, say, navigation or weather. What's the weather like today? Currently in Laguna Hills, it's 77 degrees and mostly cloudy. Today, it'll be mostly cloudy with a forecasted high of 79 and a low of 68. You can also activate it by pressing this button on the steering wheel. Navigate to the nearest Starbucks. Sure, Starbucks. Look how quickly that works. It's just up and going. Or you can even use your voice and simply, if you're driving along, just say, okay, Google, tell me a joke. Did you hear about the snowman that got upset when the sun came out? He had a total meltdown. Ah. That's a good one. So this is full-fledged Google Assistant here, so it can help you out with even non-car related things as you see there. Moving on down the left, you've got a vehicle quick screen, if you will, here. This is gonna help you out with all sorts of vehicle controls, quickly getting to things like window controls, light controls right here, things for your headlights, your auto high beams and cargo lights, power window lockout. So if you essentially have a, ch it's like a child lock. Again, no physical control for a child lock here, but it's going to keep it from other people using your power windows. Bring up your camera, which this one only has the rear view camera, but more advanced versions of the Colorado might have a 360 cam. Drive and park settings, turn on and off your traction control or hill descent control, and then get directly into vehicle settings. You've got things like teen driver settings where you can customize it and make it so they can't listen to the radio too loud or use this buckle to drive down here to make it so the seatbelt has to be buckled in order for the car to go. Rear seat reminder, turning on and off. If you have kids, I recommend leaving that on just to make sure you don't accidentally leave them or any of their things back there. Climate and air quality. Collision detection systems. I have noticed that the automatic emergency warning system is very sensitive in this truck, but unfortunately you can't actually change the sensitivity. You can only adjust whether it's on or off and if it'll break for you or not. And I do want to have it on because it's a good system to have. It's a good safety feature. I just don't like that it's so sensitive. Comfort and convenience, your chime volume. You can turn that down so it's not gonna warn you as loudly of things like uh, your key being left in the car or your seat belt being off. Lighting settings, you can adjust how long the lights stay on as you get out of the car. Power door locks, if you want all the doors to unlock or simply the driver one. Remote lock, unlock, and start, so different settings for the horn going off or um, what doors you want to unlock when you're using your remote, etc. Below that on the left side, you have your phone, as I showed you. This is gonna give you uh, your recents, your favorites, your contacts, allow you to dial up a number pretty easily there. Below that is your Google navigation, and you saw a little bit of that earlier, but again, super easy and intuitive to use. If I were actually signed into my Google account here, it would give me all the same sort of features that I would see on my phone's Google Maps. I'd be able to get my saved destinations, favorites, recent searches, things like that. I can press this and get a list of gas stations very close by, dining, grocery shopping. I can change settings. Interestingly, I wasn't able to find a satellite view setting, and I feel like I remember being able to do that with Android Automotive before, so I'm not sure why it's not giving it to me now, but at least it's given me traffic, live traffic readouts there. Very, very nice to have that. Below that is your media screen. Got a lot of inputs right there. AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, Google News, podcast, USB. You could also install other applications. Interestingly, I haven't been able to get USB sticks to play on these newer Chevy systems, so that's unfortunate. Even though it's got a USB screen right here, it says connect a USB device, but simply nothing happens. 
And then when you're on the now playing screen, if you want to adjust sound settings, you click up there for your favorites and your sound. Then hitting the home button down here. This is a home display that you can customize. Right now it's got audio up there, but you could change these. Maybe you wouldn't want navigation there. Maybe I want my trailering screen to be right there on the front. And then maybe we have this one, the larger one, be... Oh, you can't have navigation. What would Google Assistant have there? Okay, if you had your, your Google account logged in, it could tell you uh, calendar events or text messages or navigation shortcuts right there. Swiping over gives you a, more of a conventional app screen, your audio, which we've already seen, maps, phone, trailering. That's built in with a package here in this Trail Boss model. It's going to tell you your gain for your trailer brake controller, so I can turn that up physically over here on the left. Can see the information for my trailer lights. It could tell, actually send out a light test, which would test all the individual trailer lights there. That's nice to have built in. And a checklist as well. This is nice. Go through, and if you're hooking up a new trailer, maybe you're someone who doesn't tow super often, or you're someone who forgets things regularly, this will actually remind you to before you head out and get towing. And it'll also tell you your fuel economy since you've started towing and how many miles you've been towing. It's nice that Chevy gives that to you there if you choose for it. Play Store, so this is how you're going to actually install more apps onto the system here if you're signed in. Settings, is there anything more than the vehicle settings? Probably. Connections, this is where you're going to see your connections for the vehicle's Wi-Fi hotspot. You can actually change the name and the password right there or turn it on and off. See which phones are connected to the system. We'll pair up our phones here in a minute. And you can also connect the truck itself to other Wi-Fi networks in order to connect uh, for software updates, etc. Below that, we did vehicle, apps and permissions. That's just going to be for, uh, again, various apps that you install to be able to access things like your location and stuff. Date and time, we saw that as well. Display settings. This is where you're going to change from day or night mode or simply have it go automatically. Now you can see nothing really changes with night mode, does it? but you can adjust the brightness settings. Oh, speed sign, why isn't that on? So now you actually get a speed limit readout. That's nice. You can turn the display off here, but that still just gives you a clock right there, clock and date and time and the temperature. Sounds, this is where you can turn the touch uh, feedback on and off, the little clicky here. I actually don't mind it in this car because it's very calm and, and not loud. You do have a maximum volume at startup setting too. This is nice, so if you're jamming out to music the night before and you get into your car, it's not gonna blast you the next morning. Users, you can actually have other users signed into the car and this will save things like their radio presets. If you had automatic climate control, save those as well and, and their screen layout. So if you and somebody else share the car, you're each gonna wanna have accounts so that all of those things are saved. I think your Google account will probably also be paired up to that. Here are all the accounts that are logged in. If you go to sell your car afterward, you're gonna to want to remove everything there. Storage, so I actually tell you how much space you have for other things saved onto the system. System settings, where you can go through and change languages. We've got English, Francais, and Espanol. Keyboard and speech, you can actually have different keyboards installed on there or change settings for your Google keyboard. It's where you change your units. Maybe you wanna go in metric units because you're up in Canada, eh? Reset options, resetting the whole system is gonna be good and then give you some about information as well. And lastly, here's where you do software updates if you had them. Going back home, we see an app toggle there for your Wi-Fi hotspot. It's gonna bring you to the same settings we saw earlier. Vehicle information. This is the screen I showed you to change your trip setup, but you're also gonna be able to access oil life right there. It's gonna show you how much oil before you got to uh, get your oil changed there based on how the vehicle's used. Brake pad life, that's nice to see. Engine air filter life. What else do we have? Tire pressures for all four tires. You can actually drag the truck around. That's kind of cool, pretty, pretty good refresh right there. Click in and see both brake pad life as well as tire pressure. What does this one do? Battery voltage, okay. Yeah, it's nice to be able to actually click around and see the status of all those things on your truck. Tires and brakes, this is gonna show you in a different layout your tire pressures and your brake pad life, fluids and filters, your engine life, your sorry, oil life and your engine air filter life, battery voltage and coolant temperature, transmission fluid temperature, oil pressure. Whoa, transmission fluid, that's pretty hot for just sitting here, right? 
203 degrees? We were towing with our Maverick and it was running at cooler temps than that. I guess this probably doesn't have a dedicated trans temp or trans cooler, but still, it seems high. It's probably just using this same oil. Hmm. Okay. And then there's how you reset your trip meter, as I showed earlier. Camera, we saw that. Controls, saw that. Off-road screen, this is new. This is going to show you some of the similar information we saw in the center, but broken up in three different setups. Baja, terrain, and overlanding. So Baja is going to be, if you're going a little bit faster, it's going to show you your Gs and maximum Gs in all four directions, as well as your steering angle transfer case. Um, coordinates down there, as well as an altimeter at the bottom right, and compass and which drive mode you're in. You can also quickly get to your cameras. It's going to be more useful in something like a ZR2 trim. Then train mode showing you more your pitch and roll there as well as maximum. And what does that do? Probably clears your maximums. Yeah, your extremes. And then your tire pressure on the right. And then overlanding is showing you which gear you're in as well as... Oh, this is, this is an altimeter right here. I was thinking this was your RPM, but it's not. So both of these are showing you the highest and lowest that the truck has been. I don't know how the truck has been at negative 357 feet, but um, maybe some stress testing on that one. Uh, that's cool. Air down mode. This is nice to have if you're going to be doing a lot of off-roading. You can actually drag this down all the way to 10 PSI, and then when you go out and you deflate the tires, the horn will honk when you get to that set temperature. And same thing if you're airing them back up. It's definitely nice to have that feature for doing off-roading. My Chevrolet, if you're logged into the truck, this is going to allow you to communicate via the My Chevrolet app, give you more information on your vehicle. You can schedule service from in there. You can see your plans for things like hotspot. You can also access an owner's manual, roadside assistance, or purchase accessories for your truck right built in. Then we've got two Google applications installed on this one, even without being logged in, Google Podcasts and Google News. So there's a the system. It's pretty advanced. There's a lot going on here, and you can do a lot of things with it, just even not even pairing up a phone. But let's show you how to pair up Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, see what else the system is capable of. We do already have our Android Auto device paired up. It can do wired or wirelessly, but in order to pair it up, I went to devices, and then when nothing is paired, you would see an add device screen right here, this little plus sign. Press that, and then go into your phone, go into the, the Bluetooth settings, and search for the, the truck right there. Bringing up Android Auto, you can see it takes up a good portion of the screen, but you still get your status menus on the top and side, which is good because in older Chevy models, when you had Android Auto or Apple CarPlay brought up, you couldn't see your outside uh, temperature. So it's nice to have that here. You can see my home screen with Google Maps, as well as some YouTube music over here. Let's open up YouTube music. Hit the super mix. What are we getting today? Some Nicki Minaj featuring Drake and Lil Wayne. Go home. You can see now it's playing in the bottom right. Let's open up Google Maps full screen there. You can see, you can drag around, pinch and zoom, recenter it on you. And with Android Auto, you can actually engage that satellite mode I was thinking of. So pretty nice screen. It's not quite as high resolution as the built-in navigation, but they both still work pretty well. Let's take a quick look at your dialer also. That's how it's gonna look. Okay, in order to pair up Apple CarPlay, we're gonna go through those steps I mentioned earlier. Actually, for this one, I'm simply going to plug in the device because I want to keep connection simple. Right here, I get a prompt to switch phone. Connecting Charlie's iPhone will disconnect Charlie's S23 Ultra, and I missed it while I was reading it. Try this again. Yep, switch phone, enable CarPlay. Here it is, CarPlay coming up, looking good. Nice high resolution there. Let's bring up our Google Maps full screen. We're seeing a similar setup, but Apple Google Maps actually won't let you pinch and zoom, which is kind of interesting. Open up YouTube Music. Let it load. What do we got here? Let's hit the Super Mix, see what we're getting out of the iPhone. Some Incubus. All right, so there's your full screen music. If you go back to your home screen, that's how it's gonna look with things displayed there. Still getting the stuff on the sides and top. And then let's bring up the dialer. There we are. 
All right, so like I said, it's a robust system and I'm really impressed that Chevy's given it to you even on the base model Colorados here. I've appreciated using it over the week and I think you will as well. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer them and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor and as always, drive on. Thank mm -hmm. you.